So you've been doing some 10 pulls on the current banner, and while you didn't get a five star, you did get four star stringless. Now, what do you get with string? That's not even what I do with these videos. In this video, we are going to look at, I'm on like autopilot. In this video, we're gonna look at this weapon, what it does, and who it can be good for. So. First, we're gonna look at its stats. It's Elemental Mastery as its main stat. This is level 50 out of 60. Uh, Arrowless Song is its passive. Increases Elemental Skill and Elemental Burst Damage by 24%. This is at R1, which means at R5, it should be 48%, which is insane. So we are going to throw this weapon onto Fischl and we're gonna take Fischl into a domain and use it. I'm not gonna really compare it to anything. I just wanna show that it is going to work both with her skill and her burst. With her skill, if we summon Oz, it's going to do extra damage because of the passive on the initial summon and every subsequent or following shot from Oz is going to do more damage. If we then use Fischl's Burst, it is going to do more damage because of the passive, as well as whenever Oz is left on the field, it will continue to increase the amount of damage that Oz does. Thank you, Oz, for being our wonderful model. Now, who can this weapon be good on? Well, of course, Fischl. This is actually one of Fischl's best four-star weapons, especially in an aggravate team. The Elemental Mastery is going to be great for Fischl as well as this passive because she does so much damage through Oz, all of it being skill and or burst damage. The initial uh, use of her burst will be considered burst damage. After that, it will be all skill damage. So she can make really, really good use of this weapon in an aggravate team, especially because of that elemental mastery, because you want to build elemental mastery on your character or on Fischl in this instance for the aggravate reaction because of how the math shakes down. So having elemental mastery on her is going to be great. This weapon is phenomenal. Like I said, it is one of her best four star weapons. It is very, very good. And I believe that Alley Hunter, uh, which has a passive of like being off the field, increases your damage further at R5 Stringless versus R5 uh, Alley Hunter. R5 Stringless is better. If they're at the same um, refinements, then Stringless will always be better than Alley Hunter. Yeah, Alley Flash is the sword. Yeah, yeah, okay. So who else can this weapon be good on? Well, somebody else that we were using in this domain, Kale. This weapon can be very, very good on Kale in two instances that I'm gonna talk about. First off is going to be an aggravate team with like Kaching. My Kale is C6, the boomerang spins around her a lot longer. So having this is going to be good for increasing her personal damage. The spinning boomerang doesn't do a ton on its own, but it can still cause spread reactions. The burst is going, the burst damage and the initial boomerang throw damage will be increased by the stringless. So this can be good. Again, elemental mastery is gonna be good because she's gonna be causing spread reactions, which you want elemental mastery on. And if you have Nahida in a different team, uh, like I have my Nahida going to my Nilu Bountiful Core team, so Kaching can't use her, I will be using C6 Kale with Kaching. This weapon can be very, very good for Kale in this instance. Speaking of Nilu Bountiful Core, another instance if you are having to use Kale as a bloom driver in like a Bountiful Core team, then this weapon can be very, very good because of the Elemental Mastery. In Bountiful Core, all of the Bountiful Core damage is going to be uh, calculated based on your character, your driver, your bloom driver character's EM. So this can be good in that much, much more niche situation with Kale. Another character this weapon can be good on is going to be Venti, especially in a swirl team where you want to build elemental mastery on Venti. This can be very, very good. Again, this can increase the damage of his skill and his burst, which you're gonna be using a lot of. He gets ER upon ascension, so you may not have to build as much ER on him. Another character, Faruzan. Now, C6 Faruzan, where you're using her as a support, Favonius Warbow is always going to be better. Favonius Warbow is her best in slot four star weapon and possibly her best in slot overall weapon. So the Stringless is going to be much more of a damage Faruzan than what you would typically use Faruzan for. Uh, the new character, Sethos, 
if you are not using the event weapon with Sethos, which that event weapon was very much designed to be used with Sethos, if you're not using that event weapon with them, then you can use Stringless. I wonder how it would be good because of you're going to get a lot of damage through his skill, you're going to get a lot of damage through his burst. But I think because of how it calculates the charged attacks, you're, you would want the event weapon because yes, you're going to be getting skill and burst damage, but a lot of his damage is gonna come from his charge attacks. So that other weapon would be better for Sethos. Next we have Tainari. Now, this is gonna be really, really good for Tainari. In a spread aggravate team, well, he'll be causing spread reactions. So a spread team with Tainari, this can be a really, really good option. Something I did not say that applies to characters like Fischl, um, Kale, and Tainari, you still need to build a good crit split on them, except for Bountiful Quark uh, Kale, if you are using these characters to cause spread or aggregate reactions, those reactions can crit. So you do still need to have a good crit uh, split without having a crit rate weapon. So if you're able to achieve that, then the stringless is going to be very, very good for a lot of these characters. Next, we have Yelon. Now, typically, just like Farazan, Yelon is used more as a support role for off-field damage. But if you're wanting and that comes through their burst, the supportness comes through their burst. If you're wanting to build Yelon for damage, then you can definitely put the Stringless on her, especially if you're using her to cause forward vaporize reactions. This can be really, really good for Yelon. Typically you want the opposite. You want your Pyro character to be causing the vaporize. But if you want to use Yelon to trigger the vaporize doing Pyro and then Hydro, this weapon can be pretty good. You're going to get a lot of damage out of her skill and out of her burst. And the EM is going to help too. Now, another niche character that you could use this on would be like Tartaglia. This would mainly be increasing the damage of his burst because once you use his skill, it's all calculated off of your normal attacks, not your skill damage. So this would be good if you were using him to, again, cause forward vaporize reactions with like Zhang Ling, and then it would increase his burst damage, not as much his skill damage. You're, you're not going to be using that a ton. And again, you still need to get a good crit split. With Tartaglia, you want 150% crit rate or you're still never going to crit. So that is going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, do be sure to leave it down in the comments. Myself or someone else will be sure to answer it. And I'll see you in the next one.